So thank you, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, very happy to see uh, all of you again. Face it's like uh, two years passed and many uh, many things uh, happened and many uh, events we missed and now we're finally again together and can see each other and talk with each other. Uh, today we will be talking about. Uh, developer experience, um, and uh, I'm Denis Turkov. I'm senior uh, senior director of architecture at Spryker, and I'm responsible for uh, architecture design for our products uh, initiatives, but also some of our key project initiatives. And um, as uh, in my past, I had years of ex developer experience. I had uh, many uh, many questions to how to m how to make the developer experience better. And today with me on stage also Pedro Diaz, who is a senior technical product manager at Spryker, and with a special secret sauce or secret skill that he has that helps him to govern his team and his product in the way how he does it. Thank you, Dennis. Um, well, I'm not sure it's going to be secret anymore, given the case that this is being broadcast, uh, broadcasted all over the world. But um, yeah, most of you probably won't know that I'm, uh, aside from being an engineer, I'm also a certified farmer. And um, what, what, what does that mean? How is that related with IT and how can it be useful for us? Um, well, actually, there's there's a lot of uh, farming, in, in, in especially when raising sheep and lambs, that, that is about growing. It's about creating uh, life, in this case. And, and, and that translates, that's what gives me the energy. That translates to the software industry by building this SDK, which especially is, is a tool that's made for building new things. So it's actually um, also uh, been very, very beneficial for, for, for the developers. And let's see, let's see how that uh, drills down. Yeah, exactly. Same as you do in farming, you need to place the right seeds in the ground that they will grow into beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful flowers uh, or vegetables. You need to get uh, proper. Uh, 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 proper seeds. And that's where we at Spryker set our uh, mission statement as a ensuring digital transformation and differentiation by the platform that is designed for sophisticated transactional business capabilities. What are these sophisticated business capabilities? These are those pieces that you cannot find out of shelves, that's probably not a part of a commoditized market, those pieces that you will bring your own innovation into, and probably, or most probably, you will need to build it with your own development teams or your partner's teams. Now, taking this vision into game, we started in 2015 by introducing a backend framework, one framework that was capable of bringing up projects for commerce. And then we added a few more different uh, uh, fr uh, frameworks, like API framework, like front-end framework, like uh, um, uh, middleware framework, which covered end-to-end -end developer experience and functionalities. But also, we enabled business users in, with low-code, no-code solutions. Then we added to this piece a cloud piece that would not only enable you to build sophisticated business capabilities, but also to run them efficiently, use, and, uh, use most recent cloud-native features and developments. And now we are in transition phase. In transition phase to Spryker Composition Platform that will not only allow you to run your innovative piece by yourself, but also share it with other, with other system integrators, with other customers. What does it mean for you? That means that now the development experience will play an even higher role in developing your functionalities, because your code will be seeable or uh, available for other developers and other teams. When we are talking about development, li uh, development experience, we need to look into development lifecycle, how the application goes through them, and how can we uh, make it better, of course. Everything starts, and typically when we are talking about developer lifecycle, we talk about a few things, which is defining software, then building software, then debugging software, and in the end, deploying software. That's where your capabilities get available for your customers and for partners for consuming. But the thing is that usually two parts that follow after that are forgotten. And that's what we also want to bring into the game to Spryker, Spryker SDK, which are monitoring and maintenance of software. 
Because after you bring the, your own innovation piece into the game, it must be still upgradable, still observable, and, uh, and uh, developed further with your development teams. Pedro and his teams uh, did a research regarding what, uh, what types, types of developers we would address this year, because there are many developers, many engineers would be involved in your project. But, uh, uh, but in product team, there was an analysis where we identified four types of engineers that we would first address in 2022. Uh, uh, which is the first one is the backend developers. Of course, those engineers that bring their functional pieces into the game, producing the API for consuming. The front end developers that produce the unified user experience, that consume APIs and build their own front ends for your customers and for your users. Another type of engineers, of course, QA engineers, that make sure that your systems are uh, uh, functional, functioning and, uh, let's say, bugless, when you don't have um, uh, major problems with your, uh, uh, with your consumers, with, of your APIs, of your business functionalities. And in the end of the day, of course, cloud engineers. If you want to build, develop, deploy, and maintain cloud software, you would need to have cloud engineer su su uh, supported with tooling that they can do it efficiently. And here we see this problem not as your problem, but also as our development team's problem as well. So these challenges we need to overcome for our own development teams while building cloud native software. Talking about all of that, we would uh, look into um, uh, ways how to measure developer experience uh, for each of these development groups. And when, once, while talking about measurements, we can think about maintainability, test coverage, uh, development speed, and so on. But I would rather focus your attention to three maybe not so well recognized uh, measurement metrics, such as uh, training and onboarding, for your teams. It's where you want not only your teams to be very fast and boarded and available for development of business capabilities, but also that they stay longer in your company by just using sophisticated uh, development tools that uh, they, are not, they don't need to repeat the, uh, the uh, functionalities that they already built. They can always focus on new ones instead of getting into commoditized market features. Such as multi-tenancy, it's another piece of, uh, of uh, optimization for your software that once you get your software live and you would like to share it. In some companies, share with your other branches of your company. In some cases, as if you are a partner and, and uh, a system integrator, sharing with other system integrators and customers. And that's where development, and, and not only development, but operational efficiency also, also kicks in and and multi-tenancy plays a bigger role in it. And the third one, it's business insights. That's, uh, that's the piece where we want not only to get developers on board, but we, on the business side, we want to get visibility on how efficient we run the development process. What can we do to improve it? And what our next step, what is our next bottleneck to solve to make the developer experience even better? Talking about that uh, and these metrics, that's something that we decided to use for 2022 to build in our own products and SDK. And now, Pedro, please explain how do we use it, talk how we got it into the product. Thanks, Dennis. Well, well we, we all know that what's not measured cannot be improved. And that's actually also something that we're, we're using internally. So. The, the features that, that we've been introducing into the SDK, these are, these are some of the things that we've worked since our last side. It's only been six months, but we've already been able to, to put there a couple of goodies. We have um, SOM integration that will allow you to, for, for type detection. We have PHP 8 compatibility with all that, that brings. And, and for that, also, we were making use of PHP stand level 7 um, union types and, and stuff like that we can, we can solve there. And, and also, the SDK now comes with an automated QA. Now, that may seem like a feature that's not that beneficial for, for, for you as users, but it's, it will allow us to deliver much more uh, faster our releases and, and deliver much more features into, into the SDK roadmap. 
um, we cannot forget that also the SDK is being used in, in, in the quality gate that uh, Jürgen and Raquel were presenting previously. And therefore, whenever George comes uh, from clubbing, he will get his code validated against these new architectural conventions. And we're not forgetting also on the on the front end team. So, so we're also introducing some linters and, and validators for them. Um, those are some of the things we've been working. But I would like also to emphasize on a couple of features that um, um, I would particularly like to, to stress. Um, how also uh, not only are, are we guiding the software development kit in terms of how it's enhancing, how it's improving those metrics Dennis was talking before, but also we're listening to you, we're listening to your ideas. And, and we have this process where we can receive uh, suggestions for, for new features. We have from improving the debugging uh, and, and, and sniffers, also PHP storm integration, that will be awesome, and we're definitely looking into it. And there's many more. And, and, and some of them, some of the ones that we received, like, like this one, so replacing code generators with Stack Overflow importer, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about this one. Dennis, what do you think? What should we do with this one? <laughs> yeah, we, we need to consider it. Maybe with uh, solutions, we also bring some bugs in the blame. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll look into it as well. Um, but, but let me focus actually on, on, on the main feature, the most voted idea in 2021. Um, this is, as a Spryker developer, I want to be able to trace all the modules involved in a request. Now, now, why, 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 why do I want this? Why, why would I want this even? Um, so we think we agree on the person that suggested this this feature because we think it's going to be very helpful to identify extension points so that developer can go faster to their starting point or where should they put the business code. Uh, it's also going to be saving hours of debugging and, and 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 that's cost for the company. And lastly, it can also help onboard developers, newbie developers, because it will allow them to better understand how an e-commerce feature is, is uh, split into different modules in Spryker. So we actually went and implemented this as a, as a feature. What we're going to see in the next video is how a developer um, is, is, is testing uh, a, a particular trace. And, and, and the output that he's going to get is, is basically the representation of the different modules that have been called in that, in that call. So, so let's see how, how this looked like. So the first part, uh, he's going to be activating, using the SDK, activating this trace functionality. And, and by configuring uh, the SDK, um, he, he, he will then do the, the request, and of course, configuring can also be modified because the the parsing level and, and the amount of information that, that you get on the trace can be also tuned to your, to your preferences. Um, now that he has it already set up, he's going to, to be running the, the, the trace, and we will see how that translates into the Symfony debug toolbar, which is always there and very useful, and, and he actually can see the list of all the modules that have been involved in this in this trace, so 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 that's 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 one one cool feature that we have. Uh, we think it's definitely going to be quite used, but we're not stopping there. We we can also we also bring. Uh, a new a new functionality, which is the concept of the workflows. Um, the, the workflows you will get an even more uh, deeper insight on 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 Spryker provided workflows to create a PVC in the next presentation. Um, yep, and uh, but 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 we I'm I'm also here to present you the custom workflows and let's see let's see how that's working because uh, many companies are going to have maybe simple uh, development workflows or maybe very complicated developer workflows. Even if they don't know it, they already have a development workflow. They, they, their developers are working in a specific way. Um, now, let's imagine in, in, in this company where yeah, they, they've hired an, a new QA guy, and he brings this cool idea, let's get our test coverage to 99%. What that involves, okay, yeah, of course we all know that's, that's something that's good for our code, but how can we roll out this new step in the development process? 
Um, uh, if, if we go to the traditional method, the way that, that we used to do it, um, it, it'll be a pain for our engineer manager. She, she will be struggling because um, not all the developers are going to be on the same page at the same time. Uh, some people will forget, and that means that some branches will be probably failing in some time. Uh, the continuous integration is going to be read, and their pipelines won't work. We will start failing in giving estimations. So, so that's that's a that's a quite quite a bit of pain for 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 her. Now, what we're doing with the concept of the custom workflow is that we have a way to introduce, to do a soft introduction of this new step. And in, in this simple example, you were going through building, staging, we've now introduced this test coverage, and after that we can go to production. This allows everybody to get awareness of this new step. Also, it, it will receive instructions on how to use it from, from inside the SDK. Um, and after a couple of weeks, when this is already established and everybody's aware, then you made it mandatory. And that's the way that you've soft introduced this process uh, that's going to really improve the quality of your code and no hassle is going to be there. So let's actually see this in action. Um, so we're starting with this a development process where the first thing is, of course, to configure, to set up the new environment. So this developer is starting completely from scratch. He has nothing but an empty folder. And then in his company, the first step is to configure that he's going to be using this custom development workflow. So that's what we're seeing here, how he is enabling um, the development workflow, which is different from, from the Spryker provided one. Um, once he has that, then he can start or, or rebuilding his code. And for that, he needs to go to the initialization phase. That then allows him room to build all his code. He's quite happy about that. And the workflow continues guiding him on the next steps. So now we're, we're seeing how he's building and bundling the code that he wrote. It's all looking quite good. It's going through the validation. All the tests are green. Everything's fine. Then deploy to staging. Um, and of course, deploy to staging. That way, the, the product managers can then go and test the feature. Is it, is it working? Are we all excited? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It's, it's awesome. Um, but then uh, what about this step? So now when the custom workflow kicks in, he now needs to do load testing. This is a huge stall for his computer. Apparently, it's struggling a little bit with, with such a high load. But it seems to be doing fine and going through the tests. And finally, he can now deploy to production, and everybody's happy, at least for that day. Yeah, if your development uh, development laptops don't look like this one with a fire, probably you're not doing load testing. So next time, <laughs> think about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and um, OK, so we've already seen two very cool features for Spryker SDK. We've seen module traceability. We've seen custom workflows. Um, and now let me talk to you about a huge problem that we, I think we share in Spryker uh, with all the industry, not only the e-commerce industry, also probably a whole IT industry. And that's how to do the onboarding of new developers. We're all struggling to find developers. And once we find them, um, it's how, how, how to enable them, how to make them productive. For that, um, let me tell you how we used to do it in the past. So we would give them access to our academy. Um, we have uh, very cool features there. We have videos. We have tests. Uh, of course, we were giving them access to the documentation, documentation portal. Um, we would also give them a space to learn by doing, to actually fail and, and, and build some modules that were, would not be dangerous for, for them or us, uh, giving them access to tools and training them how to use them. Uh, but here's the point. Uh, all of that would be governed by the tech leads. And that's, that's, um, that's like the, the humane factor. And what we realized is that, OK, this, this was taking too long. The, the onboarding process were, were, were way too long. Um, we had this human bottleneck of the tech lead, which was also uh, a, a problem for them in terms of burnout tech leads. Uh, and all in all, it was quite, quite expensive. Um, so the, what we what, what can we do? So what we did is to sit down with with our, our architect team and and see if we could find a, a joint solution for this. Yeah, and uh, as usually uh, our product team says about uh, product development, it's like uh, making a recipe. It's like making a good salad. You mix uh, a couple of ingredients together and you get a completely new product. Here we also we took the onboarding process, we took the SDK tool and combined them. 
Now you can use SDK tool for onboarding of your engineers. Imagine as you would have a technical lead giving an answers in 24 seven for, uh, for the code that you produce with links to documentation, what this problem is about, how to find an answer to that and how to make your head code better. So how awesome is that? So actually, by using the tool on the onboarding process, then we can we can actually accelerate and, and have a better onboarding. And how did it turn out? Well, it was a huge success. So, so let me tell you that we now have a single point where all our conventions uh, are delivered to the development team. We don't need to, to be aware of who was on holiday at that particular moment. Um, it's also giving, as Dennis was saying, an automated and instant feedback and this is really important, so shortening the feedback loop for those developers. Um, it's also providing this context to where uh, documentation, so links to, to uh, the, the, the diagrams, and bear in mind that this is also up-to-date documentation. So by, by linking it through the SDK, they will be able to access to latest conventions and latest uh, documentation. And all in all, it's an interactive experience that is adaptable, as we've seen before, to any team or any process. So, so we're really happy with this one, and um, but life doesn't stop there. Uh, there's there's more things that, that we've done in the SDK, and yeah, I would like to tell you not only uh, what we've seen, but also what is coming. So, how to keep excited with what's coming ahead. Um, we've seen in the in the available now the release that's been prepared just for this excite um, that we have the developer efficiency workflows, also the the the, the SDK suite contains. Uh, more than nine tools that have been included into it. Um, this QA automate, uh, automated process so that we can deliver more uh, releases for the SDK sooner and better, safer. And, and it's also about the reporting. We haven't talked a lot about that, but uh, the reporting that's underneath uh, me measuring and, and, and logging what's going on in the SDK will gain importance in the future because we're going to be using that to, to not only build insights but also guide the, the evolution of the SDK. Now what's coming up in the next, uh, in the next quarters, in the next month, uh, for sure, we all would love to have a seamless experience, and that's where IDE integration comes into place. Um, CLI is sort of cool if, 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 if you're using it for a while, but it would be more natural to, to have it inside the, the, the IDE. We're talking about performance and security tests, monitoring and telemetry, also the tool interfacing. What does, what does it mean? Well, what do you mean with tool interfacing? Well, the SDK is also going to be the portal, the entry point to other features, to other products, other products, like for instance, the app composition platform or, or Pass Plus. So, so th that in a way is going to, to facilitate you accessing those features. And um, also the last feature that I, I would like to talk about in, in coming up next is the external contribution. What this means is that um, we are going to be opening, fully opening the SDK for whatever your contributions, whatever you think could be valuable for your developers and maybe could be reused by other developers. That's going to be something quite natural for, for, for this particular product because the way that the SDK is being developed internally in Spryker is by an inner source model where other uh, streams are contributing to the evolution of the SDK. So therefore, we get all the goodies that the rest of our teammates in, in Spryker are giving. And all in all, we're basically guiding the vision, our North Star um, of, for this SDK is to have an enhanced developer experience, how to optimize your developer workforce, to reduce the maintenance effort. As Dennis was saying before, this is sometimes overlooked in the developer process that, that, that you still need to maintain and update things that are running, the, the, the platforms that are, that are live. And, and lastly, but not uh, less important for that, is this innovation safety net. We all know that in the end, crafting code uh, requires uh, quite, quite some, um, um, yeah, what would I say? Um, well, it, 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 it's, it's definitely something that's not uh, automatic or, or robotic in a way, and it, it requires creativity. And for that creativity, we understand that developers need to have a safety net, a safe environment where to test and where to run their experiments. And that's also something that will be guiding our, our SDK. 
Now let's see actually how can you Im uh, improve the SDK. Dennis, yeah. tell us about that. Yeah, I think um, some of you already sort of, uh, oh, I have uh, these problems and that problems in my development process. How can I be part of this story? How can I improve your SDK and your developer experience at Spryker because I have ideas. Of course, you're very welcome to contribution and let's look how to contribute. So first of all, how the process of your contribution will look like. Once you get an idea or a feature that you would like to see in SDK, you can apply it for our AHA portal, for idea portal, where it will be prioritized. I can give you a few hints that, of course, the, the functionality that will be most interesting for others as well will be higher prioritized than your one uh, feature that probably interesting only for you. So that's why voting system is playing a really nice role here. So don't forget voting for each other's ideas because that gives us visibility on what is important for you and how to get, uh, how to get things faster into our development roadmap. Then things come to roadmap, and after it's been developed, you of course, uh, on general availability of every feature that you requested or you contributed to, you get notifications that something was released or it's available as beta, or uh, you would li we would like to get your additional support or uh, clarification for certain things. Um, with this, uh, please use this, uh, this QR code if you would like to get direct access to our idea portal um, and um, contribute. So any ideas are very welcome and uh, we are waiting for your, uh, uh, for your ideas there. Thank you very much. Hopefully you learned today a lot about developer experience and yeah, yeah. thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Get back to our to our host. Yeah, thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, great session. Very informative. You guys can stay here because we have time again for one question. That's awesome. Okay. You always finish just to get one question in, which is perfect. And uh, as we had the icebreaker with you, Dennis, asking the first question the session before, I hope the ice is broken now. Please raise your hand if you would have a question. Let me check the online version. So far, nothing. So it's, it's so. everything is super clear <laughs> or everything is super <laughs> unclear. It's, uh, well, then I will be the first <laughs> one. So Dennis, you simplified the life of the uh, technical leaders. Mm -hmm. What is your plan for solution architects? <laughs> Oh, wow, this is a good one. <laughs> so, uh, of course, of course, for solution architects, uh, uh, I, I think, first of all, like solution architects are usually consulting uh, developers and get these things as well done. So how to understand, how to measure code quality, how to give the best practices of Spryker is probably that you spend quite a lot of time, right? What is internal API versus external API? What is HTTP API in all of this API ecosystem, right? So imagine now you have a tool that gives you this answer <laughs> directly without, without uh, calling uh, Helen, asking Helen how, how, to, how it's structured. So this is, of course, the first way of doing that. But what is, um, what is another concern? That this tool doesn't really check your code style. It's not really about code style, but it's about architectural design that was used in your system. For example, are you following the BFF, or backend for frontend pattern, that is established at Spryker via published synchronized mechanism? That's the feedback that you can get. Are you well done on this or not? Right? Are you well done, Helen, with this? Well, I'm such an architect. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of. So, guys, any questions? Put your hands up into the sky. <laughs> okay, so probably many no business questions. many business uh, people here. So uh, no, You explain everything so well, so uh, all questions okay. are answered. But uh, as we were saying before, the guys are around, and uh, uh, even uh, over a beer this evening, I'm pretty sure that they are going to be very verbose in explaining uh, more details to what you have seen. So let's... Get them off the stage with a round of applause. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Dennis.